because we've all measured our happiness by our society around us and what we see on TV and our joy and our bliss, yeah? It's measured, it's, it's in comparison. And then this is just blows all that apart because you're coming from identification and you thought you knew what happiness and bliss and everything was, but now you're just in this stratosphere you didn't even know existed as an experience. And you're like, oh my goodness. And the only tell of somebody enlightened or not enlightened out of, out of the mess that's currently the spiritual world is with the advert of the internet is the um is a, there's an energy field that comes with it and that's been that way for, for as long as mankind's been here pretty much within a short enough window to now and that's not going to change and that's the only tell then the problem is how many people can actually feel that and so there's sensitives around and there's people that have been around teachers for a long time and they can tell that the vast majority of the population can't feel it because we're so numbed by mind and trauma and fear and, and, and living in such a, a mind aspect, we've come into our minds so much and left everything behind that we've lost this faculty that all the animals have, especially wild animals. It's actually a part of our makeup is that we have this sensitivity, but it's been dulled down in humans and almost disappeared. So as you drop back in, you start to feel all these things again. And, um, and so then for somebody that's lucky enough to have that, that, that sensitivity already, it's, it, it's really easy to work out who's who and what's what, right? Because you'll feel it or you won't, okay? You may feel a quietening in your mind, you may not, but that's case by case and that doesn't really matter. It just is what it is for everybody. When I first went to my teacher, I felt something, but I also saw something. I saw, I could see, I could see what was there. I could see what was around him. And so for me, it was easy, okay. Finally found somebody legit after years and years and years of non-legit, of actors. And so for me, it was easy. Okay, listen to this guy, okay? And uh, after a while, the trust was built. So essentially, the enlightenment is... The, the, the direct realisation that you are not the mind, that you can live without mind, you can live almost silently, completely, and you can argue silently, completely, but you'll end up sitting somewhere and not moving. So the mind might be engaged here and there to navigate certain things, but otherwise it's silent, you live silently. But that still doesn't define enlightenment because there's lots of monks and uh, hardcore meditators that are silent, but there's this extra little bit that comes in and I can't explain any other than just grace, there's a happening that happens and it's not from the eye, it just happens. And it's very, uh, you know when it happens. And if you're wondering if it's happened, it didn't happen because it's obvious. It's so profoundly different. <laughs> so, it's like, a, for me, just, you know, a few thousand volts running through the system all of a sudden and it took a while to manage it. And I heard, if you don't know the name, but Ramana Maharshi talked about it. He awakened at 16 and he said it was like, it's going to sound weird, but he said it was like a possession, like someone came into him or something came into him from the back. And that's probably one of the most accurate descriptions I've heard of it. And at first you think it's something uh, not good, right? And you can think that, but it feels so good. And so you, you can be cautious. But for me, it was like, it was, it was like, but what it really was, was me shedding the, the idea of I that we talked about there, absolutely dropping away and what was left was the real me, but it felt like something coming in. But you could, you could, and people say the descent of spirit or grace, so you call that grace, but it's just a complete dropping of the I, of the separation. And, and you're just looking around and everything was one thing. It was no longer you and I anymore. There's no longer um, uh, me and these pants and everything was just, oh, this is obviously all the same thing. Silently, obviously all the same thing. And it's a chuckle. It's, it's like the cosmic joke. Oh my God, how did I not see this before? It's just right here the whole time. It is just so obvious. And it was just the slightest little tweak. And it was obvious. The strangest thing. And then you're looking around everybody thinking they're separate. Back then, now it's, I'm, I'm more used to the experience. And initially the experience can be extremely 
robust, can I say, because you're coming from identification and you thought you knew what happiness and bliss and everything was, but now you're just in this stratosphere you didn't even know existed as an experience. And you go, oh my goodness. And because we've all measured our happiness by our society around us and what we see on TV and our joy and our bliss, yeah? It's measured, it's, it's in comparison. And then this is just blows all that apart. And so it's obvious that, you've, that something's happened, <laughs> yeah. And so you're quite enamored with that for a while, but after a while, that all, that, as time goes on, that normalizes and that becomes normal now. That's just the new way. But at first, it's very extreme experience. Well, for me, it was. There's some people that have lesser experiences too, yeah. You know, I, I'd lived a little bit of a rat bag life, so I guess I had a bigger gap, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Some people I've heard of people just rolling over like a leaf folding in the breeze. I'm going, geez, that would have been nice. <laughs> because I'm just <laughs> sounds lovely. <laughs> so it's it's the real. It's just this actual realization of the facts that there's not two. So in in, in India they'll call it advaita, which is a translation of not two. So you'll hear that advaita. It means not two, and just the oneness of it all. And prior to that, it's a theory coming from a teacher or a book or, or an ideology, yeah, or you look at the masters that Buddha and I, I'd had read a lot for decades and was seeking for a long time and, and hearing all this and then, and it's easy to get trapped. The mind can actually create a fabricated version of it, which I see a lot happening where people have been doing it so long, the mind gets almost desperate and just as a sides as an awakening there. But, but the, once again, the energy field's not backing that. So it's a story and they may have an incredible gift of the gab, but the, the, it's not there. You can feel it. And those that know, know. And there's no way of getting away around that. It's just how it is. And um, so I was aware of that. One of my teachers had warned me of that. And so I was very cautious of that. And I think that was a great advantage. And so th there was a, a deep and more honest perseverance and an assumption it wasn't it until I absolutely knew it was it, instead of craving the silhouette version, the shadow version, which isn't real. It's just another form of identification. So it, it, it's, it's a subtle thing until it's not. <laughs> So I can only really explain my direct experience and what people have said through history, really, and relating to that. And even going back to masters like Jesus, when you go read the, the, what's left of the Mary Magdalene Gospel, for example, he's talking to her non-duality. He's talking to her like this. Everybody else, he's talking faith and belief because they couldn't hear him, but she could. So he spoke to her how she, because she could hear, you see. So if he was smart enough genius enough to know this isn't going to work for everybody else. So here's your teachings. Do you know what I mean? Buddha did the same. So they, grabbed, they got everybody they could. Do you know what I mean? And of course, when we go down to Jesus, lots of distortions and over time, et cetera, et cetera. I'm talking about the original stuff. And originally his stuff was called the way. It wasn't called Christianity. It was called the way. Taoism's called the way. That ends up here too. Buddhism's pretty much the same thing. It was on point. It's all the same answer, really, at the deepest core of it. it. Comes back to the same point. It's just a lot of it gets distorted over time, yeah, with the human mind coming in. And <clears throat> so I don't know if that explained it or not. Does anyone get somewhat of an idea of what I'm talking about if you don't know already? Yeah, okay. Or is it just, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. okay, and it's okay if it's a what, what. Yeah, no, I get it. I've been there. It's okay. It takes a little while to absorb it, yeah. especially if we, we were only used to mind and no one's ever told us otherwise. It's absolutely crazy until it isn't. <laughs> yeah. Until it isn't. 